Wow, thank you very much, Mr. Harper Sigmund, such an amazing, welcoming speech. Coming up next, an astounding session that's going to be talking about is institutional blockchain adoption still in the early stages. And now, let us give it up to the CEO of BIMB, Mr. George Lee. Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, my name is George Lee. I'm the CEO of BIMB Blockchain. My topic for today is, uh, is institutional adoption of blockchain still in early stages it has been given to me. I think it's very much relevant to my company, which does uh, project acceleration uh, for crypto projects and also token projects. Uh, institutional adoption of blockchain uh, is a very important progress uh, for us to notice, especially for marketing uh, experts, because we need to be able to identify uh, what are the demands of the market at the moment and how can we uh, best suit the demand by accelerating the projects in our hand to do so. Now, before I uh, begin my, uh, the, before I begin presenting the content, I would like to uh, quote uh, Bob Lewis, a US singer, which says, uh, a new technology comes with three phases. Hype, disillusionment, and application. Uh, no, normally, new technologies come with a hype, uh, just like BTC uh, in 2017 and also last year, and also other tokens, uh, which has been hyped a lot. Uh, in fact, uh, it is quite amazing that the cryptocurrency has been hyped so much for two times, and I think it will happen again uh, in three years. Uh, basically, one year after the halving, you will have a lot of hype uh, associated with the prices of uh, cryptocurrencies. So that's a hype. And then we have uh, this illusionment. Uh, I think the good example is the dot-com bubble. Uh, I better stand here so you can see the slide. Uh, but the slide's over here, didn't mind. Okay, I stand here. Uh, I think the great, great example of this illusionment is a uh, dot-com bubble in the 1990s, whereby uh, people start wondering where would the technology go? Would it die off uh, after the stock crash in the US market? And afterwards, we do have application. In fact, if the technology is really useful, we will find ways to apply them in our real life. And that is what happened to the internet. So in this graph, we can see what is a technology life cycle uh, that has happened to, I would say, every single new piece of technology that is life-changing uh, for human beings. Now, the blockchain is already here. We have a lot of agencies, uh, even in Malaysia itself, which has been uh, adopting uh, blockchain technology in their applications. Uh, the famous one will be uh, right in your phone, the MySejatra, which uh, is the most popular app among Malaysian for the past two years. Uh, today is not so popular, uh, but it was uh, for the past two years. In fact, uh, all the identities of Malaysians, uh, along with their vaccination information, have been recorded in MySejatra app uh, through blockchain technology. And we also have public hospitals and the government assigned uh, technology company MyEG actively exploring the application of blockchain in different sectors of the government. So the blockchain is already here today, but the question that we try to resolve uh, in my presentation is whether blockchain technology is still in the early stages, whether there are still uh, spaces for progress to be made to make sure that blockchain technology becomes more popular and uh, we can maximize its utility in our life. Now, before uh, we uh, provide a direct answer to a rather direct question, I think it is important for us to uh, understand the background of how blockchain can contribute uh, to our society, to the government of the country, or to corporations within uh, the economy. For me, I think there are three hallmarks of blockchain technology. First is the indestructibility. Uh, second is efficiency. And thirdly, will be transparency. This tree will revolutionize the things that we do every single day. And this is the real utility of blockchain, aside from increasing token prices and uh, making money out of investments. I think what we should uh, realign uh, in terms of our focus and emphasis will be how blockchain can apply to our life through three of these hallmarks. 
Let's uh, talk about uh, how can blockchain contribute in terms of uh, data storage and uh, manipulation of data. Because blockchain is an open ledger, all the information will be stored uh, in a copy for each and every single node. Node is a validator of the blockchain. So which means if you store a piece of data in the blockchain, it will be distributed across a network of different nodes, having the exact same copies of the data. If one piece of the data gets changed, uh, that will trigger uh, a, a decision to be made. Whether that particular change is something that is uh, valid or invalid. And that requires 51% of the network to verify that that particular change is uh, valid. Uh, it, it will be hard to achieve because if uh, statistically speaking from the experience, manipulation is only done by a uh, in fact, theoretically speaking, manipulation is done by a small group of people in order to uh, perpetuate their self-interest in the network. So if you have the entire network uh, devoted to vote on any particular change, that particular change uh, must be beneficial to the network. Blockchain technology can do that because uh, for any changes to be made, you will need to achieve a consensus among the network nodes. Secondly, because they are duplicates of the data across the network, uh, you actually cannot uh, destroy uh, the data per se because uh, every single node has a copy of the data. So the problem that can be resolved here, uh, in my view, will be uh, purposeful manipulation of data. Nobody can manipulate the data in their favor. Second is destruction. Uh, it is anti-destruction because exact copies of the data is being stored in different nodes. So we cannot destroy uh, the data. If you destroy a particular uh, set of data owned by a node, then you can recover the data from other nodes. Uh, and then, of, of course, untruthful reporting uh, because each and every single piece of corporate information or government information before they are being released, uh, then they will, it will be verified first through the blockchain network. I think this has a great application in our society uh, because uh, our news media and uh, social media, they are filled with falsehoods actually. If you are in the marketing agency, you will find out money can actually do a lot of things uh, in the media. If you pay a lot, you can actually disseminate falsehoods. A falsehood in media is truth until it is being challenged actually. It will be published first until somebody challenge it then we will resolve the problem in the court uh, later. Yeah. But uh, with this, we skip that process and we can ensure that all the data being reported and being presented are truthful and without fraud. Yeah. Of course, a uh, second hallmark of blockchain will be efficiency. Uh, blockchain is efficient in the sense that it removes uh, middlemen. We do not want uh, a lot of middlemen in business transactions, in particular in commerce. Uh, middlemen is a cost, actually, for business. If we have a lot of middlemen, which means things become more expensive for us. But for blockchain, uh, we have already seen the application of uh, transfer of funds from one place to another. Uh, E-payment system uh, using blockchain that requires little or no middlemen. In that case, there will be no charge uh, for the transaction. Or if there is charge, it will be the network charge. Uh, everybody, I think here, they have been using TRC20 before. They used TRC20 to transfer USDT before. Uh, I think everybody has bought crypto here before. And you understand that TRC20 only charge one USDT uh, per transaction. In my research last time, I get to know that if you do a swift transfer, uh, in terms of telegraphic transfer, you actually incur uh, 10 to 15% of net cost in terms of conversion rate and the middleman charges of the agencies, the central bank, and the bank itself. You incur 10 to 15% of your transaction cost. That is extremely expensive. Actually. And for a business, I think that's a cost. Uh, blockchain can help to solve this problem, and it has been proven to us, the removal of middlemen. Of course, the removal of middlemen is not only restricted to electronic payments. It can also be for other stuff such as uh, licensing, uh, re resource wastage. Uh, now, in terms of licensing, because the network is self-sustainable, 
the validators, they can actually uh, look through the requirements before a license is being issued. Uh, this is what we call electronic government. Uh, now, it, it skips through a lot of middleman process, which is the main catalyst uh, for corruption. If you have humans, there will be corruption uh, in the government. You pay them, things get faster uh, in the procedure to apply for a license, for example. If that process can be replaced uh, by a blockchain, then uh, the, the whole process will become more uh, seamless and streamlined. And the corruption um, can be minimized if you consider corruption as a cause, which I think it is. If you do not pay certain uh, agents, certain officials of the government, certain amount of money, then your things could not get through very fast. I think that is a, a known fact, not only in developing countries, but also in developed countries. And the next one will be transparency. Now, in terms of uh, transparency, uh, it, we talk about uh, purposeful manipulation uh, of uh, uh, data. Okay, now, uh, you, if you can see in the illustration here, this is a uh, long time ago, uh, the election between Barack Obama and John McCain. And you notice if the hand pressed on Barack Obama is actually voted uh, for John McCain. So this is a, a manipulation of uh, votes, actually. Uh, I think the main problem of that is because uh, this, is, this particular e-voting service is provided by a hardware. And a hardware can be corrupted, actually by humans, but if you, have, uh, if you could distribute this particular decision to a network of nodes of trustworthy people or the people themselves in the election, uh, there will not be uh, such thing. Uh, you may have an element of corruption in the network. Some network nodes may approve uh, something which is not truthful, but uh, pulling together the consensus mechanism uh, you can have majority of the nodes agreeing on a decision that is acceptable by the most people. Uh, in that, uh, people will regard the decision as more truthful. Wouldn't be 100%, uh, but uh, more truthful. And in certain cases, we can actually achieve 100% accuracy. Mm. Uh, so I think uh, the transparency hallmark can actually help us to remove uh, certain systemic fraud, not only in government, but also in corporations. We just have to distribute the decision-making to a network of nodes in the blockchain. Uh, and the validators, we will pre-select them based on trustworthiness. Then we will be able to resolve that particular issue. So there are six benefits to take away from my uh, presentations. Uh, the blockchain uh, technology uh, will be able to provide six main benefits to both commerce and uh, e-government. The first is to save resources. Uh, resources will be saved it will not be lost too much. Uh, there will be leakages. Uh, in fact, it's unavoidable. A blockchain network can also collapse. Uh, we also have seen uh, in the past one month, a certain major blockchain network has collapsed dramatically. Uh, we can, that can happen, but it is uh, quite rare. And uh, during the process, you have already saved many resources. And we can remove an, a lot of undesired conflicts because uh, validation is done uh, for the transaction to go through, especially in terms of e-payment. Uh, we can restore integrity of a system of a government or a corporation. We, can, we are able to remove corruption uh, from the government. Okay, uh, removal of corruption or minimization of corruption. We also redu reduce conflict in fact, I would say, uh, as a lawyer myself, uh, the court expenses, uh, legal expenses in this country is uh, way overboard. It's very, very expensive to access the court, to access the lawyers. That's why many of the lawyers are actually quite wealthy individuals, because uh, we have a lot of conflicts. Lawyers love conflicts. If we have a conflict, we love them, because uh, we can profit from it. But in, in terms of uh, constructivism, uh, talking about being constructive, lawyers are not constructive people in economy because they only resolve conflicts. They do not contribute anything to the economy. If you have a conflict, they come and solve your problem, and you pay for it. That's about it. Uh, do they build any buildings, uh, ecosystems, uh, tokens, projects? There's nothing there. They only help you to resolve your problem. So please, uh, have more problems. Uh, it will be good for lawyers, actually. 
Uh, so that's, uh, but blockchain is there to resolve this problem. I consider that as a problem, even though I'm a lawyer myself. Uh, okay, and then of course, uh, supplemental to all this tangible benefit, we also have projects being able to augment their commercial popularity. Because uh, the, one of the beauty of blockchain tech is that we'll be able to uh, tokenize your business and the public will be more informed about uh, what your business models are and what do you do, and at the same time, you'll be able to raise funds uh, using that token. And uh, actually, my company is helping people to do that. We help to accelerate the popularity and the outreach of uh, crypto or blockchain projects. Uh, of course, we pre-select them. Uh, if they are of uh, good utility, we actually help them to accelerate in different regions uh, of the world. Uh, in fact, my company itself has a vision uh, after being a successful accelerator, we actually plan to begin a project ourselves. Uh, we would like to reform uh, uh, international. We would like to reform international uh, norm and essential standards in terms of uh, electronic payment. If you have any question, you can consult uh, BIMB. Uh, the process is re relatively simple. Uh, we can have, uh, you can have a white paper and you integrate blockchain into your business and you tokenize your business. That is uh, our three-step process that we will help you through. So to, in response to the direct question of whether uh, institutional adoption of blockchain is still in the early stages, I would say, look around you. If there are still problems in regards to validation, in regards to uh, leakages, uh, high business costs, unnecessary costs, and unnecessary conflicts, then I would say it is still in the early stages because blockchain can do so much more for government, commerce, economy, and business. Thank you very much. Such an amazing session. Thank you once again, Mr. Josh, as the CEO of BMB.